And we're back. That one was a weird one. It was, it fell together easier than I thought it would, sound wise. But playing wise, it kicked my ass. I've never played slide but since I played slide when I was about 18 on an acoustic guitar because I lost like my, I, I lost my plectrum and I found a thumb pick thing. So on an acoustic guitar, I played it for like a couple of days. And I remember thinking, this is not me, dude. I'm not just naturally inclined towards it. So I had to woodshed on this one for a long time. Check out, this is a picture of my hand after trying to practice for this one video. Check it out. That is filings from the strings. I've been playing so many times. I remember at one point I drooled on the strings. I drooled on them. Because I was concentrating so much and I was playing and my hands were black and that's what it takes man to, to get close and I didn't even get close so you can tell if you listen to his version it's got more finesse and mine drags out of tune here and there but I think I did an okay job of it and uh, that's it I think my version was really close apart from the secret weapon let's talk about the gears the gear even I used practically everything that he used apart from a few little tweaks. Things like the guitar I used was a Les Paul shape and a Les Paul, you know, um, mahogany and all the rest of it. But I'm with the MG81s, but it's not a Gibson Les Paul. I used a, an Ibanez and it's really confusing to me because when I hear an Ibanez guitar sound good tonally, it kind of like what's going on. Is there like, is this an alternate reality where an Ibanez guitar is actually sounding good? It's really weird. So. And in this case, it's called an Ibanez Artist series. And uh, you can get these for pretty cheap. I mean, it's neck through. Uh, it has one of those neck uh, profile things, which takes away the heel, which takes away a little bit of the tone, in my in my opinion. People are like, oh, I want to get easy access. Work for that shit, bitch. Work for it. Get up there. Stop making excuses. Oh, I need it to be perfect. It's too heavy. Oh. Les Pauls, man. It's the meat. It's the chunk. That awful neck joint is part of the tone in my opinion. So, Ibanez fanboys in the comments, come and say hi. Uh, please stay. You need my help. Trust me, tonally. Uh, let's get away from those Ibanez guitars. All right. Enough enough trolling. What, what I, when I said that it gets away from the uh, crux of it, this Yamaha SPX90 was the chorus type effect that he used on the album. And I used it too. I think I was too... Uh, I didn't use enough of it. I, w I had it on something like 50%. In my opinion, he probably had it on 75% of uh, the mix. So that it really, uh, you know, churned the sound a little bit more. I think that's where mine was missing. So, but I think it's still, you know, almost, it's almost there. Another aspect, which I almost... I almost fixed in post-production, but I didn't bother. It was the, uh, mine was just clearer. And that is, we, we don't, we, we have it so good right now because modern equipment that we record on in people's bedrooms sound better than the, the big studios of the 90s. There's just more definition, there's more low end, there's more mids, there's not more, not more, but it's just, you have more of a noise floor, more of a, a it's absolutely pristine digital digital uh, capturing on these computers. So I, I actually wrestled with this. I thought, am I going to muddy it up by trying to do the tape and trying to do the, uh, you know, all of the limitation, the mellowing dynamics of their uh, all gear? And I thought, I actually like this sound. I, I think it would be uh, nice to hear what it would sound like in the studio today. So that's what I did on this one. I usually break it, but in this one I was like, do you know what? I really like these chugs. I really like the meatiness and the forthrightness of it and the clarity of it. So I actually, it's strange for me, I didn't try and recreate that this time because I thought it might take away of something that was, you know, it wasn't broken in this instance. You know, sometimes these mellowing dynamics, they tame the shrillness of say, a Jimi Hendrix Strat and a Plexi, which is which will, if you mic that up today, that would take the enamel off your teeth. You know what I mean? So that's what I did. I just left it because it was big and bold and brash enough as it was. It didn't need any changing, in my opinion. So 
artistic license. You know, I don't get paid for these videos. These videos go to Sharon. The money does. So, you know, uh, I did that. And uh, what else did I use? I used the same uh, boost that he used. Let me just grab it. It's all hooked up. Preparation. Preparation H. Super Overdrive, the SD1. Uh, this is a Keeley modded one. Sometimes I get the old original ones. I couldn't in this case. I just owned this, so I'm not, I'm not going to buy a, a used one. And uh, the settings on this were pretty cranked for a distortion. I had the tone at the level on 10. That gives you the meat, the bass, the bass. People like EQ things with bass. If you put a boost in front of an amp and turn up the volume on the, the boost, that tends to accentuate or retain as much bass as a guitar will allow. If you force bass, it tends to just get flubby. So on this, I had the level crank to 10. The drive was actually noon on this. And I I had the uh, the level on something like seven out of 10. Uh, 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 no, sorry, I had it at uh, about four out of 10, for the tone. Because I actually took a bit of the uh, crispiness off. Because this is a crispy pedal. So uh, I just took, I just, you know, it's its own worst enemy. So I. I tamed it with its own tone knob and I left everything on the amp. People have said, oh, what are the settings on the amp? Let's have a look. That's you, by the way. Oh, you, you, you're miming. You're not doing it. You're, you're, just, you're just playing along with the CD. You're out there. It's not you. You're, just, you're in the circle. Welcome to the inner circle of tone. All right. So we have the presence on six. I don't know. I'm, I'm full of energy. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. I like this. I, I enjoyed this one. Uh, the bass is on 10. The middle is on, uh, actually I cranked the middle, the mids are on like seven. Uh, the treble is on four and the master volume is actually pretty low. The master volume is on... This is 100 watt. And uh, the preamp is on 10. So it's full on Marshall, full on, you know, good old fashioned a boss and a Marshall and, a, and EMGs. EMGs under my roof. This is circular tone. I had to hold my nose and bring these EMGs in. And then I get embarrassed afterwards because it's one of the best uh, distortions I've ever done. And it's EMGs. Go figure, right? Ooh, 1959 Gibson Path. Oh, oh, I have to degauss my magnets to, to recreate the, uh, the aging process. Oh, you, used, you didn't use wooden spacers on the pickup? Oh my God, tone suck. Yeah, no, EMGs do it, dude. <laughs> In like Flynn. All right. So that was the setup. And the one, one of the things that I wrestled with that a lot of the videos, n none of the things really uh, attack the speaker that often. They come with two speakers. It's either a, a G1265 Celestian or it's a G12T-75 Celestian. And I have both of those speakers from the same era and I got better results with the 75. So maybe he originally it had the 65 because it's not it's an old you know it's like a 1981 i think um and maybe he changed out that because with those you know t they tended to go for let's put the louder speaker in there so it doesn't blow you know because 65 watt thing in a 50 watt head that's as loud as a 50 uh watt marshall if you're traveling on dodgy ground but so the 75 actually, I didn't use my eyes on this one. I didn't show myself which was the 75 and which was the 60. I actually uh, did did it by clip. So I just closed my eyes. I didn't look at which track was, was which. I jumbled them up. And then I just used my ears to listen to which speaker sounded the best. And the, 70, the 75, which is good for you guys, because the 60, uh, it, that costs like 120 bucks to get one of those used. And you can pick up a 75 for about 60 bucks used. In fact, I'm selling a couple. I collected them, I've got like literally 10 G12T-75s. So if you wanna buy one, I can sell you one. Circle of uh, Tone Incorporated. <laughs> so yeah, so that was the crux of it. Was there anything else? Yes, there was. He endorses Monster Rock Cables. Um, what these do, they're a big, bold sound on these. They shave highs. Uh, I think he has a problem in general with highs. And, and you know, he'd be the first to admit that probably, that is, is pretty swampy, his sound. And this will help with the swampy aspect because uh, it cuts highs, this cable. Kind of shit, but it's good. 
if you 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 can use these as EQs. If you have like I have the trebles on like uh, the mids cranked on this, so if you have something that's really scritchy scratchy, this will actually tame it. So I use cables like EQs. So I used his monster cable. I also threw in Belden old Worldwind cables, which they probably would have used in the 90s back then. So I mixed those cables up together. And uh, there's another little tip as well. So let's let's talk about the production. I'm nooding out. <sighs> Breathe on. <laughs> so they let's talk about a little bit about the history of Zach and Ozzy. Zach, in my opinion, doesn't get enough plaudits just from trying to play this this track this track is beautifully played uh, you know i was drooling and then everyone's like oh pinch harmonics pinch harmonics it's like no he's it's deeper than that people are like oh who's your favorite uh, they always say randy Rhodes when it comes to aussie they all you know 90 percent of people i didn't actually like aussie osborne with randy Rhodes. Uh, I, I respect it but it was too happy. Crazy. When you're an edgy teenager, you know, like me, everything sucks. I don't want happy, uh, you know. I, 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 I wasn't into all that type of stuff. So I appreciate what Zach did. Zach made Ozzy evil and heavy again. You know, he got him back to the darkness and out of the weird jumpsuits with the makeup and the weird 80s soccer mom hair you know what i mean so it kind of like so what they did was uh zach was completely outside of his own state he was completely out no and nobody knew who he was and they took a chance on zach uh, he sent in a demo it was actually a photographer that knew that ozzy was uh taking uh looking for a new guitarist and the photographer hooked him up with and got his demo to Ozzy. And you can actually look, listen to the demo on YouTube. It's, it's on there. I'll put that link in the description. And uh, so that blew away Ozzy. So then he had to get this kid. And the funny thing is, just that, you know, you're in, it doesn't mean anything because I, I saw the, one of the earliest interviews with Zach and Ozzy. And Ozzy was kind of unsure about it. He, you know, the interviewer said to him, How's he working out? You know, is this the future of guitar? And he was, Ozzy was was brutally honest. He said, I don't know, man, you know, maybe uh, we'll see how it goes long term. And because Zach was sitting right next to him, and Zach was all like, you know, creepy at Zach, you know, just like a puppy. And he was like, because <laughs> the first album, you know, it doesn't really rock it into the stratosphere. And it was on No More Tears that I think that Zach's stock really went up. And uh, it was great stuff, man. That, that, that production was amazing. And it could have been different. Um, this is a very important lesson. Zach was a kid. And he was with one of the most famous producers that's lived. Right? And he looked that producer in the eye and said, this guitar isn't good enough. It's not heavy enough. And the producer quit. And what happened? Keith Olsen stepped in. Uh, saved the day. And he brought in his JCM 800 combo. And that simple old thing just saved everybody's bacon and it saved the record. So that's it. If you are in a position where you're not happy with something musically, just say something about it. Don't say, oh, I'm just young and he's the professional and, you know, it's, I just gotta, I'm just happy to be a dunce. Trust me, it'll get you nowhere. And they, you'll, they'll, producers will just take advantage of that and they'll try and get it done as quickly as, as possible if they're, you know, in a cocaine phase or whatever back then. So, on to the main producer. Uh, so sad. John Pridell was so talented and a little known fact that he actually wrote No More Tears and he wrote it on an acoustic. And there's this, I did some research on him and there's this wonderful clip that I hope I can show you. I've asked uh, the person that owns the video can I just show a small clip of it and then you can go back to his website to to watch the whole thing but it's him just playing the tune in its original format on a I think it's a 12 string or maybe just a regular acoustic and it is really really nice and 
It's such a shame. He was a brilliant keyboard player and, uh, you know, multi-instrumentalist, uh, fantastic songwriter, and uh, he produced quite a few good, you know, good albums. So that's, uh, I, I just uh, want to dedicate this video to him. And uh, it's, what can I say? John Pradell. And he also had another secret weapon, which I used on this track. And this, in my opinion, really helped the low end. Because you don't get much low end from a JCM 800 when you tune down to that level, you might. But I used the Yuri uh, graphic equalizer, the same one that he had. It's the same one with a little bit more option on it. Um, it's actually better than the one that they used back then, but it's the same type of vintage deal. So that was also brought in to uh, save the track. And it's it's great. It's a great story. He was, they had to actually buy out Zach's contract back then. And, you know, he, some promoter had him and ended up paying him like $75,000 just to get Zach, which proves how much that one little demo did, you know, to, uh, to get him in the fold. Such good stuff. So, and, uh, his first gigs with Ozzy was in a prison. They actually toured prisons. And Zach was like, who talked me into this? I was drunk all the time. And he said, yeah, yeah. He probably wanted to be, you know, uh, a trailblazer. Like, who was it? The uh, the Man in Black. Uh, they He d he did the, the tours before them. What's his, what's his name? I can't remember. I'm in Zach mode right now. And you, you might be wondering why am I not really talking about Ozzy that much? I think Ozzy gets enough plaudits you know i think i don't think zach gets enough uh respect for his playing um his playing style and it was actually ozzy that told him about the pinch harmonics it was ozzy that said uh that could be your thing and he was right and you know snobs like me or emgs and pinch harmonics and whatever people the real public the music listening public they don't care about our bullshit you know they just care about what's portrayed and is the guy faking it or is, you know and zach is just zach is rock and roll you know he's he's that kid th that would do it for free and i respect him and he's a funny bastard as well so uh i'm gonna do a little bit of a treat for everyone this is something that i always wanted when i listened to it how heavy is that riff in no more tears and the uh in the verses so i'm gonna put like 10 of them together i'm just gonna listen to it non-stop and I'm going to introduce also the uh, Circle of Tone, Zach Wilde interview and live drinking game. So check it out. Okay, so we're back. There's a, uh, the mic. What did I do with the mics on this one? I forgot to mention the mics. I, got, I need a whiteboard, dude, so I can like, I just come in here, hit roll and uh, blah, blah, blah. SM57 on this one, old classic with a twist. Remember my Alison Chains video? If you haven't, check it out. There's a little twist with the, with the, the microphone. It's similar to that. When I listened, to it, I heard a lot of room, a lot of boom in that guitar sound. So what I did, I put an Audix, was it an I6, I9, underneath the cabinet, in the back of the cabinet. And this is a four type, four, four by 12 sealed cabinet. I tried the one by 12, it didn't sound right. Believe it or not, I tried, <laughs> I tried to recreate the size of one by 12. I think it's, a, I think it's a four by 12 because there is so much uh, what I call proximity bleed from the other speakers. It's obvious. You can tell it's a 4x12. So I, I know this. There's, I've done a, uh, a video 
on 1 by 12 time versus 2 by 12 versus 4 by 12. I'm going to check that out in the comments. And they do sound completely different. Same speaker, just different cabinet. And this, the proximity effect is in that. Even one mic can suck in the sounds from other speakers down there and give you some more woof, some more like heaviness. So I actually put a bass microphone underneath the cab and that simulated the woof, 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 similar to the Alison Chains uh, video, but a little bit different because I didn't hear that technique. I tried that. I thought that's might have what it would have been since it was, uh, you know, a 1 by 12 uh, uh, Marshall cab uh, combo. So I think it was that combo into a 4 by 12 and then with room mics just unintentionally picking it up. So the bass. I think the uh, I don't think that was a, a live affair. If you listen to the drums, the drums actually sound triggered, and there is the hilarious miss trigger halfway through the song, and it is so blatant, and they left it in there. This thing was mixed and mastered probably in half a day because they did not pay attention to that. Uh, it's their single, and they have a huge misfire. It's like doom da da doom da da. It's not even that. That was in time. It was like da da da. Do that fucking crazy. Yeah, man. Good times. And there's lots of news on the circular tone front. Uh, by the time you see this video, I might even have it. Um, my guitar is coming. The circular tone, black burst, Les Paul style guitar. So I'm going up against the Gibsons. I'm going up against the big boys. I think that they have sat on their uh, monopoly for too long and they've ignored what we really want. So I've got all sorts of uh, options coming on this guitar. And also I have my own amplifier, which is going to recreate that combo that they had back in the day. So you can use that two mic technique to get that huge sound from one amplifier and two microphones. So it's going to it's coming in 150 watt flavors, just a head and or a combo and uh, it's going to be Celestians in it. It's going to be a good Celestian. I know everyone's like vintage 30s, vintage 30s. It's not a vintage 30. It's going to be a, a, something that sounds even better and uh, actually takes more volume because, you know, 1 by 12. Good things are coming. My own pickups, my own cables. There's all sorts of stuff. And it's going to be called the Affordable Audiophile Range because I complain about these companies. I'm sick of complaining about them. So I thought I'll try and do it myself to put myself in their shoes because the corners they cap might be justified, but I'm going to find out for myself. So wish me luck on this endeavor. I've incorporated Circular Tone. I'm going to try and make music. I'm not, I don't just want to be a producer. I also want to be a general music company. Everything from microphones to, I, I think I know enough about the budget gear to make it work. Hand wired, vintage internals, vintage wire, uh, top of the line silver solder, and uh, even some little secrets that I might not say. I may I may tell the inner circle about the secrets that's inside. If you want to join the inner circle, uh, go to Facebook and search for uh, Circle of Tone groups and our group will pop up. And you can join, you can tell me about your band, tell me about your little secrets, your little quirks, putting mics underneath cabinets and all that crazy stuff. I'm sure you've got some secrets, I want them. I'm sponge. And we can learn together. I've learned so much from you guys. I've learned so much from research and all this stuff. And it's great fun. I am so proud of this one. It sounds huge. You know, EMGs, who would have thunk it? I'm going to put you in a proper guitar because, you know, Ibanez. <laughs> proper guitar, it sounds awesome. What am I talking about? Look how ugly this thing is. Why? What is that? Is this Liberace's piano? Ugh, so gaudy. Why? Look at that. What's wrong with that? Plain old mahogany. So I can't wait for you to see my black hole burst. That's a clue in the title. Oh my God. It's so sex. So sex. And my own pickups. I'm designing my own magnets, let alone the pickups. The magnets that go inside them. Lots of thought has gone in into these bad boys. And uh, vintage new old stock uh, wire. The wire. Some of it. On the, on the top of the range ones. Stuff is insane. All right, guys. This is me, Owen, with Circular Tone. Hope you like this. Please subscribe. Even like. Just, just like one second and uh you know we can do this together keep this thing going hopefully uh i won't be going out of business in four months time <laughs> cheers guys circle tone what what